Hello students, this is a continuation of our previous lecture on the topic Scheduling PERT and CPM. So we were dealing with a problem where we considered a project whose activities were given to be this. And we were asked to find, draw the network and then calculate the earliest start, earliest finish, latest start and latest finish and the critical path and all the floats. Now we have uh, drawn the network diagram already and we have found the critical path and the duration to complete the project which was 25 weeks. Now we are going to calculate earliest uh, finish and latest start because we have already completed earliest start and latest finish which were the values E and L that we have found in this network diagram. So after that, now we have to calculate the remain, remaining part that is we should also calculate the total float, free float, independent float and interfering float for the given project. In order to calculate all this, now here I have drawn a tabular column where I have taken the activity as the first column and then the duration which is given in the question. These two are given in the question that is the activity and the duration. So I, ha I have written uh, the, all this in the form of a column. So I have written the activities here and the duration to complete the activities I have written here. Now we have to calculate the earliest start, latest, uh, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish and all the floats. So total float, free float, independent float and interfering float. Now earliest start we have already calculated that is the value E that we have calculated in the given network if you see so all these values so for um, for the event one okay the value of e is equals zero for the event two the value of e equals eight for the event three the value of e equals 12 so for the event four the value of e is 18 for five the value of e is 17 and for six the value of e is 25 so accordingly we have to write here now if you check here the uh, tail event we have to check out so what is the tail event it is one so for the tail event we have to write the earliest start time that is the tail event one so for one what was the value of e that we have calculated it is zero so that we have to write in this cell and then for this is also the tail event is one so the start time will be zero now here the uh, tail event is 1, so 0. So remember we have to write the earliest start for the tail event always. Now here the tail event is 2 and the value of E for uh, 2, the event 2 is 8. So that we have to write here. So it is 8. Now next also the tail event is 2 and so this will be 8. And then we have 3. So what is the value of E here? For E uh, 3 it is 12. So that we have to write here so 12 and then here also the tail event is 3 so it will be 12 again the tail event is 3 so it is 12 and then we have the tail event as 4 so the value of e for 4 for the event 4 is 18 so that we have to write here then the value of e for the tail event 5 is equals e is equals 17 so we have to write 17 here. So now after completing this, we have to calculate the earliest finish. So now we have completed earliest start. So now we have to calculate the earliest finish. The formula for earliest finish is given by, actually this is earliest start. So that is E. And the, so we, we can write it as ES because it is earliest start. Okay, now we have to calculate earliest finish. Earliest finish finish is we have to add the earliest start with the duration given. So now earliest start we have written here and the duration, duration maybe we can represent it as T. So if we represent the duration as T, then we have to add this ES earliest start and T. So earliest finish is equals earliest start plus this t okay so remember this so earliest finish is equals earliest start plus the duration t 
So now if you see for this cell, it will be 0 plus 8. Okay, so what do we get here is 0 plus 8 which is 8. And for this cell it is 0 plus 7 and so it is 7. Then 0 plus 12, so it will be 12. And then 8 plus 12 which is, I mean say now 8 plus 4 which is 12. And then 8 plus 10 which is 18. So here now again, now 12 plus 3 which will be 15. And then 12 plus 5 which is 17. 12 plus 10, so it will be 22. And then we have 18 plus 7 which is 25. And then finally we have 17 plus 4 which is 21. So we have calculated all the earliest finish. So earliest finish is equal to earliest start plus the respective duration. So after completing this, we have to write the latest finish first. So we have to write latest finish and using that we have to evaluate latest start. So remember, we have to write the latest finish first. So what is latest finish? Actually latest finish is the time, the value of L that we have evaluated and we have to write the latest finish for the tail, uh, I mean, uh, the tail event, a um, head event. So before we did for the tail event actually. Now we have to do it for the head event. So actually uh, this this event is known as the tail event and this is the head event. So for the head event we have to calculate the finish. I mean write the finish time. So here the uh, head event is 2. So for 2 what is the value of L? The value of L is 8. So that we have to write here. Now next here the head event is 3. Now what is the uh, value of L for 3? It is 15. So that we have to write here. Now next the head event is 5. So what is the value of L for 5? It is 21. So we have to write 21 here. Now here the head event is 3 and the value of L for 3 is 15. So that we have to write here. Now here next the head event is 4. For 4 the value of L is 18 and so that we have to write here. Now again it is 4 here so it is 18. Now here the head event is 5. So for 5 what is the value of L? L is 21. So that we have to write here. Now next is 6. For 6 the uh, value of L is 25. And so here we will be having 25. And then again here the head event is 6, so 25. And here also the head event is 6 and so the value will be 25. Now after completing this, we have to calculate the latest start. Actually latest start is equals latest finish minus the duration t. So this is latest finish. Now we have to subtract the latest finish with the duration t in order to find latest start. Now here if you see it is 8. So 8 minus 8 will be 0. Now here you have 15. So 15 minus 7 which is 8. So that we have to write here. Next we have 21. So 21 minus 12 we have to do and that is 9 which we have to write here. And then we have 15 minus 4. And that value will be 11. And then we have 18 minus 10. And so it will be 8. And then we have 18 minus 3. And so the remaining will be 15. And then we have 21 minus 5. The remaining will be 16. And then we have 25 minus 10. So the remaining is 15. And then 25 minus 7 which is 18. And then 25 minus 4 which is 21. So I hope you have understood how to calculate the earliest start, earliest finish, or latest start and latest finish. Next we will move on to the calculation of floats. The first one that we have is the total float. Total float is given by the formula latest finish minus the earliest finish. Or it is also latest start minus the earliest start. So what I am going to do here is I am going to take latest start minus earliest start. Okay. So what is latest start here? 
it is 0. So, 0 minus 0 which will be 0. Then here it is 8 and here it is 0. So, 8 minus 0 is 8. This is 9. 9 minus 0 is 9. And then we have 11. So, 11 minus 8 which will be 3. Then we have 8 minus 8, 0. And then 15 minus 12, which is 3. And then we have 16 minus 12, which is 4. And then 15 minus 12 is again 3. 18 minus 18 is 0. And 21 minus 17 is 4. So we have calculated the total float. So always remember, total float is equals latest start minus the earliest start or latest finish minus the earliest finish the definition of total float free float independent float interfering float everything i will be explaining in our next video because i want to compare the definitions with this problem and explain it to you okay so the next video will be the definitions on these uh, floats Okay, fine. Now, next we have to calculate the free float. Now, next we have to calculate the free float. The formula for free float is equals total float, okay, minus the slack of the head event. So, all these definitions I will be explaining in our next video. So, now you remember free float is equals total float minus slack of the head event. Now, total float we have already have here. This is the total float column. So, directly we can take the values from here. But what is this slack of the head event? So, that is, now we have to take the head event, corresponding head event here for the activity. What is the head event? It is 2. The slack for the event 2 will be, so now if you take 2, the slack for this event is L minus E actually. You remember, it is L minus E. What is the value of L here? It is 8. The value of E is 8. So, 8 minus 8, 0. So, slack I will write here for your understanding. Okay. So, maybe I will write with another pen. So, here it is 0. The slack for the event 2 is 0. This is the head event. Now, here the head event is 3. So, what is the slack for the head event? It is L minus E, right? So, 15 minus 12 which is 3. So, that I will write here. Now, the slack for the event 5 we have to calculate. So, for the event 5, the slack is 21 minus 17 which is 4. So, that I will write here. Similarly, the slack for the head event 3. Already we have it is 3. Now, for the event 4, the slack is 18 minus 18 which is 0. And so, that we have to write here. Now, again 4 here. So, the slack is 0. Now, for the event 5, the slack is 4. We have already calculated for the event 6, the slack will be equal to 25 minus 25, which is 0. So, 0, 0, 0. So, these are the slack for the head event. Okay. Now, the free float is equals total float minus the slack of the head event. Now, what is the total float here? It is 0. What is the slack of the head event? It is 0. So, 0 minus 0 will be 0. Next is... The total float for this row is 8. Now, the slack for the head event is 3. So, 8 minus 3. So, that will be 5. Then, we have the total float as 9. Here, the slack is 4. So, 9 minus 4, which is 5. Then, the total float is 3. And the slack is 3. So, 3 minus 3, it will be 0. And then, here we have 0 as total float. And the slack for the head event is 0. So, 0 minus 0, 0. Now, here it is 3 and the slack for the head event is 0. So, 3 minus 0, so it will be 3. Then, here it is 4 and here it is 4. So, 4 minus 4, 0. Then, we have 3, 3 minus 0, so 3. 0 minus 0 is anyway 0. And then, 4 minus 0 is 4. So, this is the free float. Next, we have to calculate the independent float. The formula for independent float is free float minus the slack of the tail event. So, remember the formula for independent float is free float minus the slack of the tail event. For which first we have to calculate the slack of the tail events 
and then we will calculate the independent float. Now here the tail event is 1 in this activity. What is the slack for 1? It will be L minus E. Remember always the slack is L minus E. So it is 0 minus 0 which is 0. So I will write that here. Okay, and then again here it is 1, so slack is 0, 1, so slack is 0. Now here the next we have 2, so 8 minus 8 is 0. And so the uh, slack for this event is 0, again 0. For 3, for 3 it is 15 minus 12 and so the slack will be 3. So that I will write here, so 3. The next event is also 3, so the slack is 3 slack is also again here 3. The next event is 4. For 4 the slack is 18 minus 18 which is 0. So I will write 0 here. The next event is 5 and for that it is 21 minus 17 and so the slack is 4. So I am writing 4 here. So now we have calculated the slack for all the tail events. Now we will calculate the independent float. Independent float is equals free float minus the slack of the tail event. So what is free float here? For this it is 0. So 0 minus 0. So it will be 0. Then 5 minus 0. So it will be 5. Then 5 minus 0. So it is 5. And 0 minus 0. Again 0. And then 0 minus 0. So it is 0. Now here it is 3 minus 3. And so it will be 0. Then we have 0 minus 3. So this will be negative 3. Remember. Okay. So then 3 minus 3. So 0. And then we have 0 minus 0. So 0. Then 4 minus 4 which is 0. So this is how we have to calculate the independent float. And finally we are having interfering float which is very simple. This interfering float is also known as interference float. And the formula is total float minus free float. Both we have already calculated. This is total float. This is free float. So 0 minus 0, 0. 8 minus 5 which is 3. 9 minus 5 which is 4 and then 3 minus 0 so it will be 3 and then 0 minus 0 so 0 3 minus uh, 3 so it will be uh, 0 and then 4 minus 0 so 4 and then 3 minus 3 it is 0 0 minus 0 so 0 4 minus 4 it is 0. Hence, we have evaluated all the floats and also earlier start, finish and latest start and latest finish. Hope you have understood this lecture. In our next video, we will see the definition of all this. Uh, earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish and also about all the types of floats. Oh, thank you.